What I'm about to talk about, I think is essential for all of you, for your career, within or after, when you're not here, or whatever plays out for all of you. What I've been talking about for the last five to seven minutes, and what I'd like to frame up for all of you as one man's point of view of something that has clearly worked for everybody at all levels in the business world over the last 30 years that I've observed is scaling the unscalable. So I wanna spend a few minutes on this concept and just put this in your mind, scaling the unscalable. Me driving that Behringer White Zinfandel for two hours for something that was like $30 for a case was scaling the unscalable. The thing that I really wanna talk to some of the field leaders, especially in the stores or even corporate, is I can't get over this mind that if you're really as customer centric as you like to say you are to the world, and I see how you try to position yourself, I'd like to challenge everyone here to do more scaling of the unscalable for customers. So for example, I'm about to tell you a story that is also iconic to me that I think GoPuff can scale 10,000 times better than I did 15 years ago. And I think this is for corporate and then I've got one for the field. So for corporate, so Twitter came out. I was fascinated by it. I was like, the world's changing, the internet's changing. And I was really focused on lifetime value and retention. I'm sure for the people in analytics in this company, when you look at all the people that have bought from GoPuff or BevMo, but haven't bought from you in six months or 12 months, you just look at it like, fuck, it's all right there. The, re the lapsed user is one of the most interesting things in business. So I was obsessed with that. I was like, we have the best, you know, we were really rolling at Wine Library. We have the best prices, we have the best selection. I felt real confident. I was like, why isn't everybody buying everything from us? <laughs> like I wanted it. And so I started thinking about, okay, we're doing all this internet shit right, but we're not doing like the heavy touch. You know, the shit that fucking locks it in. So I said to the team, I had this idea, boarding a plane to Napa, ironically, I had the idea, I called my best friend Brandon who runs the store, I said, why don't you do something? I want every order that comes on winelibrary.com, I want you to Google the person's name and see if you can find them. Obviously some people have John Smith, that'll be hard. Luckily some people have Gary Vaynerchuk and there's only one of them and you can find them. If you find someone who you really know who the fuck it is, it's that person, let me know. They found someone. I said, now I want you to go and find them on Twitter. Can you find, and this was Twitter early. So like most people weren't on. So I knew it would take a little bit. About a week or two later, I get a call. We got some dude. I'm like, amazing. So he, they go, we got this dude. He, he, bad news. This is gonna really make the BevMo people laugh. Bad news though, we found him, but he bought a case of Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio. The shittiest, most overpriced wine of all time. Real talk, super overrated. Kudos to them. It's one of the few wine brands that have built an actual brand so people are buying what is really $4 Pinot Grigio for 25 bucks. Thank you. I go, that's cool. I go, here's what I want you to. So I go, tell me. So I'm on the phone with Brandon. He goes, I found his Twitter. I go, what's he tweeting? This is where the story gets interesting. Every tweet out of this dude's mouth is, Jay Cutler, I love you. <laughs> so this dude lives in Chicago and he's a huge Bears fan. And he's tweeting, like now we all tweet along with sports all the time, but this was early shit. And it's like, Jay Cutler, why'd you throw that pass? Jay Cutler, don't do that. Great job, Jay. It's fucking Jay Cutler. For the majority of you who don't know, I'll just say it one more time, Jay Cutler was the quarterback of the Chicago Bears at the time. I'm like, okay. I go, Brandon, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to eBay, and I want you to buy a Jay Cutler jersey signed in a frame and send it to him with a note that says, thank you for shopping at Wine Library. Brandon's like, bro, that's like 350 bucks. We made like $8.09 in the whole case of Santa Margarita. I go, I know, I know. I go, trust me, I just want to do this. So I'm thinking we're going to send this fucking Jay Cutler fanatic a jersey. He's going to fucking be blown away. And then I'll show Brandon and the team just like my Behringer story. I'm like, look, he spent all his money with us over the next two years. Let's do this. I had a whole master plan. I'm so pumped. I'm like, I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking genius. I'm like, yes. And then real life hits. This 
we send this dude this thing, we don't hear a fucking peep. <laughs> Nothing. Now it's a month, it's two. Now I'm not like, you know when you're like picking a scab? Like now I'm like just addicted to this fucking, sp- I got a million things going on. All I give a fuck about is some random dentist in fucking Chicago <laughs> who I sent the Jay Cutler jersey to that bought fucking Pinot Grigio from the fucking most overpriced producer in the world and hasn't said thank you. So I'm dead. Like for those months, I'm like really annoyed about it. We do some other little things, but this one really stuck to me because it was so egregious, right? Like it was so big for what he bought. And then one of the most interesting things happened. I get a phone call from Brandon. Again, Brandon is currently, right now, in Wine Library in Springfield, New Jersey, not too far from here. Like I met him on the first day of high school. So my best friend, but also runs my family business. He calls me, he's like, you're never gonna believe this. And just by the way he said it, you know when you know somebody for 15 years and you're, like I knew it was that. I was like, the fucking Jay Cutler guy replied? He goes, no. <laughs> God, this motherfucker. He goes, just stick with me. He goes, let me read this. I'm like, go ahead. So I read some name, Plano, Texas. And he rattles off like a $7,000 red burgundy order. Right, so just really high-end, single vineyard stuff, like just really esoteric, small producer, red burgundies, seven Gs. I'm like, okay, that's a good order, but I'm like, but what, what's the punch? Because I knew he wouldn't just call me for now. I'm like, yo, what? He goes, he goes, no, no, he's like, wait for it. He goes, da 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 He goes, now let me read you what's in the note. So that's what I knew it would get good. I'm like, what? He goes, hey, um, first of all, you have an amazing Burgundy selection. Can I speak to somebody? I'm looking for some other stuff. Second, I live in Texas. It's hot as shit. Can you please hold it for a while? He goes, P.S. My best friend lives in Chicago and you sent him a Jay Cutler jersey and that's how I found out about your store. P.S.S. I'm a huge Bruce Springsteen fan. <laughs> That happened fucking 15 years ago. I think about it all the time. And I think when I was you know, thinking about this talk, I was like, what's the move that they can actually do? Like coming and giving a talk, you only got a limited amount of time. And like you could talk about mindset and perspective and I'm touching on different shit as you can tell. But I was like, what's the action that this company can actually do that can reinforce so they can taste it? of what I'm actually talking about. When I analyze from afar the virtual and physical combo of GoPuff and BevMo, and especially really knowing the BevMo business and understanding what's happening in the California market, and obviously you're in other markets as well, liquor bar, these things, I really do believe, both for yourselves and for your customers, that 2024 is an incredible opportunity to scale the unscalable. There's a lot of ways to spend marketing dollars. You can run Facebook ads and Google ads and in-app. There's other ways to spend money. Things that create debt, like buying a Jay Cutler jersey and sending it to someone. You are sitting on, on both companies, unlimited data, unlimited. All of the magic sits there. We have just gotten into a world where everything is digital and virtual and scalable and AI is coming and it's all this and all that's happening is we're getting further away from a business era that our grandparents lived in. I actually believe the way our grandparents did business is actually the real opportunity of the next decade. It is the people that understand whoever brings the most humanity wins. I believe that that will matter for the way you frame up how much you care about customers. I actually believe there's a more important story in here, which is, what if you did that to each other? Back to what I asked for, for you to consider at lunch, what if you actually went deeper with each other? What if you actually cared, like for real?